All right, chapter 23, and we're back to Kiana telling the story. Cut it out, Chauncey. My half-pint half-brother is crawling all over my notes, which are spread out around me on the floor of the den. His onesie is open, his diaper is sagging, and he's teething and drooling, an action figure of a Power Ranger or Transformer clutched in his little fist. Mateo can probably ID it. I make a mental note to Snapchat him a picture. Chauncey's chubby knee comes down on my chart of the atomic masses of elements, shredding the paper, and I freak out. Louise, I bellow, then borrowing Dad's lines. Dad's line. Jeez, Louise. Chauncey is startled and bursts into tears. I feel bad about that. As key as he is, you can't help getting used to a cute little guy who seems to love you for no logical reason. On the other hand, I need my chart of atomic masses just like I need my periodic table and all the other notes I have carefully organized on the floor. I'll never understand, teachers. Sure, I get it that Mr. Kermit has come back from the lost land of crossword puzzles, but now, totally out of nowhere, he's gone science crazy. The state science assessment is on October 23rd, he announced last week. This is our chance to prove that our class can do as well as any other group, maybe even better than some. The way he said it, how he made it sound like it was us against everybody else who calls us unteachable, got the whole class on board the Science Express. Elaine's eyes were practically shining with excitement and purpose. Maybe she thought we were going to dissect somebody. We're like Frodo going up against the dark forces of Middle Earth, Matteo declared. Okay, that's standard Matteo, but even Aldo is sort of into it. Ribbit is framing this as a giant in your face to the whole school. Now, no way Aldo can pass up a chance at that. So that's why I'm in the den up to my ears and graphs and formulas yelling at a baby. You think I'm thrilled about it? The best thing about being a short timer is you can slack off with no consequences. I can't even get that right. What's wrong? Stepmonster rushes in and spies her little darling laying waste to my work, like Godzilla stomping Tokyo. Oh man, I really am spending too much time with Mateo. She expertly scoops him up using one arm. I almost bark something rude like, what took you so long? But then I spot the tall glass of iced tea in her other hand. I thought you could use a study break she offers, setting the drink down on the edge of the coffee table. Kiana, your dad and I are so proud of her, how hard you've been working lately. It annoys me. Who does she think she is? My mother? She's definitely not that. I know, because she isn't on a movie set in Utah, leaving me in exile. Chauncey hangs off her hip, arms and legs flailing. The action figure flies from his little hand, landing with a kerplop in my iced tea. Chauncey, she scolds. You ruined your censor's dream. Believe it or not, I actually sympathize with her then. Overwork, sleep deprived, and saddled with her husband's California kid. It's not ruined, I say quickly. It's just... I fish the Power Ranger out, watching the level of the tea go down. I drop it back in again, and the level rises. My eyes widen in understanding. Archimedes' first law of buoyancy... A floating object displaces its own weight in liquid. I've been trying to understand it all day. I spring up and wrap my arms around Step Monster. Thanks for the tea. Chauncey sinks his newly cut tooth into his thumb and starts bawling again. The science craze even extends to Terra Nova Motors. Jake buys these rolling whiteboards and his mechanics show us how to calculate horsepower and torque. We have a contest to see who can be the quickest to label the parts of an internal combustion engine. Parker wins, even though some of his spellings are a little creative, like crankshaft, looks looking like scarf think. Jake keeps telling us how important it is to do well in the test to make Mr. Kermit look good. He says it over and over again until his face gets flushed like he's really stressed about it. What's the big deal? If by some miracle we ace the exam, those good, good grades will be ours, not our teachers. And if we bomb out, well, that'll be on us too. How is it Mr. Kermit's fault if his class happens to be dumb at science? Okay, maybe we're not so dumb. On Friday, we take a practice test, and we do pretty well. I pull off a 92, which is amazing, considering science isn't my best subject. Elaine gets an 86, and both Barms Barnstorm and Raheem crack 70. Even Mateo squeaks out a pass at 67, which isn't bad for someone who can't tell the difference between Earth and Middle Earth, and thinks the Force and magic are real. 
Aldo brings up the rear with the 62, but Kermit, Mr. Kermit steps in before he can get too worked up about it. Think about it, Aldo. Three more points and you would have passed. You're a completely different student now. You're reading Where the Red Fern Grows, an award-winning novel. I believe in you, and on test day, I know you'll be able to scrounge up three more points. Yeah, Aldo exclaims, energized. If I can care whether old Dan and little Anne win the coon hunt, I can care about anything, even stupid science. Puffy tails for everybody, crows Barnstorm, waving a crutch in the air. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, our teacher tells us. We don't want to be overconfident for the real test next week. But, he adds, I'm proud of each and every one of you. If you put up these kinds of scores on the actual assessment, it'll say a lot about what we've accomplished together as a class. Those words stick with me. What we've accomplished together as a class. Well, okay, I'm part of the accomplishment, but I'm not actually part of the class. Technically, I'm not even part of the school. It doesn't make any real difference. I'm going home to LA, but not next week. I'll be taking the science assessment alongside everybody else. Still, I can't help wondering how the others would react if they knew the truth about me. It makes me uneasy. I can't get past the guilty feeling that I'm keeping a secret from my friends.